Welcome, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. Michelle's under the chat. <laughs> and hello, fellow 12th House listeners. Wallace, how are you? How's it going? Life is good. I actually talked to a lot of people over the weekend about this conversation that we had with Marley. Wow. Okay. There are so many things that we talked about that I'm like, this could be about burial plots. This could be about boobs. This could be about skincare. (laughs) This could be about being a professional artist. It could be about writing a book. What did you talk about? (laughs) You're right. But I talked about mostly the idea of when you realize that you haven't been allowing yourself to feel something for a long time because you think you should get over it. Generally, this is talked about a lot in spaces that we're in. The power of seeing is believing or hearing somebody doing the job that you always dreamed of but didn't know existed or showing up in the world the way that you want to show up and being like, oh, I can show up that way. Knowing what's possible. That it is Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then realizing, oh, I haven't allowed myself to think that or feel that way or reconcile my own feelings. Mm -hmm. And from, I mean, you'll hear right away, it's right at the beginning of the episode. It's specifically about one aspect of how I feel in my body. Mm -hmm. And we just, we kind of started there and we spiraled all over the place, but I've been thinking about the conversation a lot. I love that. It reminds me of a quote I heard Patrice Collor speak at Second Home a couple, mm. probably a year ago. And something mm-hmm. that she said that really stuck with me that lives in my second brain is abolition is radically imagining a new world mm. and a new future. And when people can't imagine that's when they're, you know, stuck or trapped or when mm. they can't imagine a new future. And I don't know. I feel like those things are, they're kind of, they're connected when we like lose our ability to dream. It's one of the worst things that, you take, that can be taken away from us. But then when we are invited in to like, wow, the world could be different. Your future could be different. Like there's so much possibility when we get to imagine a different pathway. It's like, oh almost overwhelming all the opportunity and possibility. And you mentioned something that is such a great exercise that relates exactly to that. And I was thinking about it this morning. I was having a lot of anxiety this morning about a million different things. And then I walked outside to get something from my car and I immediately felt better because I was like, oh, yeah, (laughs) the it's almost like the sky is so low in my house <laughs> that I felt like oppressed by it. Right. And I walked outside and I was like, oh. the walls are closing in on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dying. yeah. And cause I was hyper focused on my anxiety and mm-hmm. just, you know, whatever I was spinning about. And you talk about that exercise of widening your perception. What's it called? Your literal. Yeah. Your little yeah. literal, like what you can see side to side. Yes. Mm hmm. And uh, I think in so many ways, this conversation will do that, or I I hope will do that for people, because we really talk about not only being comfortable in your body and showing up and being seen as you want to be, whatever that is in in the moment, because it evolves, but also Marley, very graciously, our guest, Marley Grace, just opened up about their experience navigating different income streams, but also different relationships to making money. And different purchases that they've made in the past little while that have really changed a lot for them. And I don't want to spoil too much, but we kind of go all over the place. And I think it was very expansive for me in in so many different ways in opening up my ideas of what's possible. And Marley mentions a couple of notion classes that they took with holisticism, which we are so honored, so flattered. And uh, (laughs) we have two more classes left in 2022. Notion for Magical Bodies, Digital Altars, and Social Media Spells is Doors are closing on Friday, and I'm teaching class on Saturday and Sunday, November 5th and November 6th. It's the last time I'm going to teach before I go on maternity leave, so if you want to hang out, now would be the time. <laughs> and then Wallace and Janelle will be teaching our system spells class in the very beginning of December, which is going to be amazing. So if you haven't already checked it out, Marley mentions both of those classes and actually took another class with us. They've taken our whole back catalog, but if you'd like to join in on the fun, we'd love to have you. You can go to the link in the show notes and you'll learn more. And Marley has a really exciting workshop happening in November that uses quilting as a way to bring people together and explore their creativity. And we will link it in the show notes so you can find out more because it just opens twice a year, I believe. So this is the last time for a little while and is really a fun way to be in community. So check it out. This episode is so good. And we we always try to keep our conversation reasonable, a reasonable length of time, but we just couldn't (laughs) quit this one. (laughs) 
So no, we just can't quit Marley. <laughs> Y'all are getting a longer episode today and it goes all over the map. So we hope that you enjoy it. And we had the best time talking to Marley. They're incredible and go check out all their work. We'll put the links in the show notes and we talk about what they're up to. But without further ado, let's get into the episode. Michelle was showing me the human growing inside of her body. The baby bump. Yeah, it's wild. I I sometimes look down and I'm like, wow, this is so weird. Also, like, I feel like I should be more like, like in awe of like my body or something. But I'm just like all bodies, like bodies just like do this. I know it's a miracle, but also I'm like, but so many people have done it. So like, is it that big of a deal? I love that. (laughs) That's how I feel when people are, yeah, pregnant. I'm really like, how are you feeling? And I'm more like, does it feel absolutely fucking crazy that there's another human just inside of you I think people are always like surprised by that but I'm like to me that's what's crazy I'm like no that that really is it because like as a dancer right you're so used to having control like just this control over your body or access to your body like I know exactly how to move my pinky in this very specific way right and then like I don't know all of a sudden like a foot will come out of my stomach (laughs) or like kick me in the rib and I'm like what is going on like I can't control this little Literally like a little alien inside of me. And it's just growing in there like a watermelon or something. It's so weird. My question is always like, aren't you, don't you feel just full all the time (laughs) in a weird way? Like I'm hungry, but I'm also very full. Yeah. Well, your stomach like disappears because they're just like taking up so much space inside of you. And like I get out of breath because also you're, they're pushing up against your lungs. And like (laughs) now I have to wear these like snoring strips at night because I'm snoring so loud because like I can't breathe. It's wow. so embarrassing. It's like the opposite of the sexy, beautiful, like yeah. sensual, womanly thing. It's just like <laughs> bodies, you know? <laughs> Marley, how are you feeling? You had surgery, right? I feel good. I had surgery. Yeah, you guys want to see my little A-cups? Look at these. Oh, things. my gosh. Wow. Ugh. Do you just love not having to wear a bra? I feel amazing. I will say for all the huge boobed people in the world, I wasn't wearing a bra anyway. So, you know, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in just no one needs to wear a bra. I'm in that camp too. Okay, good. Okay. I mean, I think it's, it's like both a little bit like being non-binary and I think like being a dancer, being a mover, just like, so, I mean, you know, I had, I got double D's in my like junior year of high school as like a bunhead, and that was an unfortunate oh. thing that God gave me. And so it's like, oh. I've always really struggled with having big boobs and felt like they weren't like right in my, for my body. So I feel amazing. It's kind of like just the other day was two months since surgery, and it's like, I just, full, I have like my full mobility back, and I'm just feeling oh really gosh. good. And yeah, I feel great. Wait, this is something I'm like, I need to follow your journey about this later because I really want a breast reduction, but I am terrified from it. And also when I talk to anyone about it, all they want to do is convince me out of it. And they're like, what are you talking really? about? And I've, I've also never been comfortable with mine. Like I just have felt, especially since I was 25, they just don't stop growing. <laughs> I don't know why. Really? Yeah, and my family has, like, both my mom and my aunt, who I look at, I'm like, man, they have huge breasts and, like, so much back pain from it. But I also, as somebody who's always been into sports and movement and just, have just never, I hate even if you can see, like, a little bit of them. Like, I, so I am so happy for you that you feel comfortable and good. Everything described, I'm like, go get a breast reduction surgery, dude. You'll feel Mm -hmm. your whole... Well, I will say I had one in 2015. So I had, I was, had like a 34 triple G and went to like a C slash D and I wanted to go smaller. And the thing that's really tricky is, especially if you're not working with like a trans competent doctor or just a plastic surgeon who is in like plastic surgery world. Um, yeah, I'm curious if this ever comes up on your guys's podcast. Do you guys talk much about plastic surgery, like either in the cusp or here or the Good For You podcast or stuff? We talk more about beauty, a little bit about beauty standards and beauty, plastic surgery. We had a a brief conversation about how most plastic surgery, there's a perspective that a lot of plastic surgery that women get is 
actually gender affirming because it makes them more feminized. Yes. And that is such an interesting concept to sort of wrap your brain around and be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. I think it makes you like a little bit more, I don't know, empathetic to people who are, who modify their bodies, right? Well, I think what, what came up for me, which was hard the first time I got my surgery is I was like, I want them to be smaller. And the doctor was like, you'll look like a boy. And I was like, <laughs> sounds great. Yeah. You're like, I've literally <laughs> always wanted that. And that was fucked up. Cause I'm like, girls can have a cups and yeah. that's if they want to be like so it was obviously like the language was really outdated and horrible but basically I had to teach my surgeon my mm. surgery like it's easy to go get like a full mastectomy top surgery right. like you go to a right. doctor who does like that for non-binary people for trans men it is really hard to have a doctor give you like on the scale like a more feminized a cup chest is hard to get um, because they really are like, but it's disproportional because like you're Kurt and you're just like, what? oh my God. Like, so it's, wow. and it's, yeah. So I, I am excited. I think probably like, I'm going to give it another month to just keep sort of like privately healing, but I think I'm going to do like a whole thing on my sub stack about the whole journey because I really want to empower more people to ask for exactly what they want and, and have a surgery that feels good to them. Um, but yeah, it's funny. They do part of the surgery was like lipo, some liposuction on the side. And I've been calling it gender affirming liposuction. And it feels really <laughs> fun. And I've been really like, I never was into Kardashians and I, I am now if, 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 I, if I may, um, I've been watching series now that it's on Hulu and I'm yeah. so I'm really like becoming kind of I don't have an intention to get more plastic surgery but it is funny even though it was like a gender affirming top surgery like I still went to plastic surgery associates in Grand Rapids Michigan you know it's like yeah it's so I think I'm coming more like fascinated by that world that's like feels very separate from sort of like the queer anti-capitalist world I come from I think it's interesting. So anyways, those are my thoughts. Yeah. But even that my personal, I guess, thoughts have been, I can't, I don't need to get breast reduction. Like I, that's not a gender affirming surgery, like quote unquote. But then I'm like, but why not? For me, it would be like, I would feel better in my body. But I also recognize the complications of, I'm not going to go and say that because that doesn't really necessarily help people, but I do feel it's so complicated. I need to look up who it was. Um, I think it was Melissa Phoebos who hmm. wrote the Girlhood and just wrote yeah. the book Body, which I really loved. Um, Michelle, I feel like you'd really like that. And I think she wrote, I kind of feel like it was for the New York Times or for some bigger publication, wrote a thing like, like, why women should get breast reduction if they want, mm, like, amazing. or, you know, why any gender. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where it's interesting. It's like, yes, it was gender affirming to me, but like I mentioned, you know, I felt mostly like a she, her girl when I was in high school mm -hmm. and still didn't want my, best. right. So yeah, and I think plastic surgery just gets a bad rap yeah. because it, it, it is somebody slipped into my DMS and was like, why did you cut your boobs off? And I was like, First of all, but Whoa. I was like, okay, um, that's one way to go. <laughs> right? so you were trying to be like, you should accept your body how it is. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like, I think that's, you know, sort of when, when I've heard people talk about why you quote, shouldn't get Botox or shouldn't get this plastic surgery or shouldn't get this. I think having this experience for myself, now I'm sort of really released from that where if a friend's like, I kind of want to get Botox for this line, I'm like, put a needle in it, girl. Like, go ahead. <laughs> like, go ahead. Like, Light I it up. Kind of like, <laughs> yes, we can accept ourselves or like people dye their hair. I dye my hair or I don't, but you could dye your hair. I, I'm covered in tattoos. Right. I'm doing a bunch of other shit. Like, anyways. The myth that body modification is not something inherent to the human species, like, is so weird. You, there's so many different other examples of that throughout history in different cultures. And the fact that there's so much judgment, especially towards non-binary folks and women who are usually engaged in it, is suspicious. Suspicious. <laughs> Moi. I love that this is where we started. <laughs> Well, this is actually truly 
in line with what we're actually talking about this month on the podcast because we're kind of focusing on the idea of being seen. So whether that's being seen online, being seen in a new identity, you know, we can take it whichever way. And your everlasting identity that, you know, you're just now maybe comfortable being seen in. But Mm -hmm. so honestly, perfect segue (laughs) or intro. (laughs) We got deep or quick. (laughs) <laughs> we have a question that we always like to start off with, and you can pick between the two or none or both, whatever you want. Oh, my God. <laughs> the first question is, how many friends do you have? Or how much money do you make? Cool. You know, I, I turned 34 this year, and I'm trying to make my friend group smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> and smaller, as small as humanly possible. As a Gemini, that is hard. Uh, so the answer is I have so many friends how do you keep in contact with everyone because you know everyone and then you like you and you were hanging out with maceo and and you like met my my husband and i was like how you waved i i got to wave at him we didn't get to meet it was really sad actually i was like we need to meet yeah maceo i love maceo i'm so lucky we both live in michigan now which yes. is beautiful yeah it was like it was actually it's funny it was like i was recently in detroit I, my friend ellen had a ellen rutt had a opening at her studio and i left and suddenly on the corner i was with one of my like best friends chloe my main collaborator maceo my ex-husband <laughs> his friend and that friend's ex-wife it was like the whole block was just like I was just like I have so many friends and this friend group is so weird and now I have to go home I'm so popular I'm so popular um it's literally true I mean a big reason is I've run I've run artist residencies for the last Mm -hmm. decade and so I I'm a host I host people I bring people together I think I'm just someone who loves I just love people really big. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm somebody like really proud of my friends. Like when my friends put their work into the world or just, you know, do, you know, remember to call back a creditor. I'm like so proud. (laughs) So I have a lot of, and I'm happy to report. I make six figures. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. That feels huge. The year before I think I made 95000 I think the year before that, I made like 30000 <laughs> So it's like, you know, and the year before that, I made 70000 So, you know, you can sort of track like where divorce and mental health crisis and book advances come in and whatnot. Yep. But, um, yeah, I haven't gotten a book advance in a couple of years. So that was all teaching pretty much last wow. year. And have a lot, you know, I don't mean to promote the service on the service, but I do have to just shout out a lot of that is, is Michelle inspired in holisticism classes. And I mean, I took, what's the acronym? PCCL? Yeah. Wow. Good memory. I've taken so many notion classes. I I I love the 12th house. You're a notion like stand hard. You have your own notion. I'm a notion stand hard. I'm a notion stand hard. You did that to me. You did that to me. I'll take it if not. I will. Now I've done done that to a lot of other people. Yes, yes. Um, And, but it was really the, um, Michelle, you posted Overcoming Under Earning. Mm. And I read that book. And then I read The Secrets of Six Figure Women. And both of those books changed my life. And now I'm a six figure man. Now I'm a six figure they them. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, those are my transparent facts. And I'm, I've been like sharing them more and more and more. And it feels, you know, my fear is always I will lose friends. Mm-hmm. And as you just mentioned, I seem to have quite a few. So it seems like no one's going anywhere. The more money I make. <laughs> as an artist, that was my biggest fear is like, if I make money, all my artist friends don't make money. We'll never hang out anymore. Like I won't be able to drink, you know, $2 beers and a shot with them. <laughs> no, I remember when, I don't really want to do that anyways, but like, I just won't be relatable and they won't like me and I won't be cool. And I want to, I like the, I love these people. Like I want to be relatable to them. It's so interesting. I just had to write down. I don't want to do that anyways. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the thing is I started, I think I was like, Oh, I'm so afraid X, Y, and Z friends aren't going to want to do X, Y, and Z thing with me. And I had already gone past wanting to even do that thing with them anymore, but was so afraid to like betray whatever we had built, whatever suffering we had built together. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, that commiseration. 
We were talking about this yesterday, actually. We we did a whole podcast talking about friendship and the kind of difference between when you realize, oh, we are just completely on different wavelengths and you're still kind of trying to connect based on this past history and shared history, but really your futures are diverging and how you navigate that and deal with that can be so painful and how long you hold on to it just because it's comfortable And as it relates to money, I feel like that is so big when people are changing, especially to maybe a non-traditional career path or your schedules are totally different now because you require different schedules to do what you do. And I just I think it's so nice that you shared both of those things because they really do coincide a lot and we underestimate it. Marley, do you feel like. Because you've been sober for a while. Congratulations. I have. Thanks. Did your sobriety, like, do you feel like you're more yourself now? I'm just thinking about, like, this idea of being seen and how we evolve and change. And I think there's a common narrative that, like, oh, we become more ourselves. As we get older, maybe we, like, undo some layers of onions. But I also kind of, like, want to maybe in my own brain push back against that and be like, I don't know if you become more yourself. You're just, like, always changing. Maybe you're always yourself. but. I don't know. I I haven't been on a sobriety journey. Do you feel like that's true? Like, what's that experience like for you? Yeah, thanks for asking that. I mean, I, I think I kind of agree. I'm kind of like, no, I'm kind of the same. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, I mean, you know, well, first of all, yeah, next month will be 11 and a half years. So it has Whoa. been a minute. So there's. I know, I know. I'm really just the time, the days keep running together. Um, so it's been a long time. So there's part of me that's, I really relate to the sort of language of like physical allergy. Like Mm -hmm. I I was always really, I mean, since I was a child, I've been like extremely outgoing, really social, like really comfortable in most situations. So like drink, I didn't need to drink to like feel like myself. Right. So when I quit drinking, I, I do think, you know, to me, I do take drinking as seriously as like, um, I think for me, if I were to start drinking again, I don't really think I'd stay alive too much longer. Like I'd probably like wrap my car around a tree or, you know, die by suicide or drink myself to death. And I don't say that to be dramatic or that's just the way I left off. Mm -hmm. I assume if if I picked back up, I'd start pretty close to where I left off. Right. But I do think more for me, the peeling back the onion is like sobriety allows me to peel back the onion. Hmm. Like if I were to drink, I would, there'd be no onions to peel. I would probably just have stayed the same. So I think for me, it's like I had to get sober to like start the process of peeling back the onions. It's just maybe funnier to track just because again, like I quit drinking in my early twenties. So it's like, I guess I peeled back the onions when lots of other people were also during their Saturn return Mm -hmm. and they maybe could drink normally during it. And I just happened to be sober. So maybe that makes sense. But yeah. Yeah. It's like you changed so much in your early twenties. I don't know. I was like such a piece of shit when I was in my early twenties. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not that I'm not a piece of yeah, shit exactly. now. I'm just like a different type of piece of shit. Exactly. I would see that's the shorter answer is I was a piece of shit than a smarter, richer, hotter piece of shit now. Okay. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> we can only hope for that as we age. <laughs> I heard this definition of authenticity as like when you don't have your guards up and your walls up, how you naturally are when you're more comfortable and relaxed in whatever given situation. So that kind of changes depending on the situation and how comfortable you are and how, you know, hopefully relaxed you are. And I thought that was interesting because I feel like for so many people, Drinking is a mask or whatever substance is a mask. So to your point about maybe you wouldn't have changed in the same way. Maybe it wouldn't have accelerated you kind of peeling back those layers of the walls and the defenses that you had up. I just thought that was a nice definition that I hadn't heard. I don't know. I kind of have beef with like authenticity these days. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like, it's it's boring to me. <laughs> I know that's not a popular opinion. Yeah. I think whoever like in er- the early aughts of Instagram, like made the hashtag live authentic really ruined the word authenticity for, for us. Sure. Sadly, shout out to who did that. But it was probably like Darling Magazine or something or Cosmo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> 
But I think I like Wallace well, what you said, like the less triggered I the less triggers there are. It's yeah. like, yeah, the less triggers there are, I definitely feel. Well, and for me it's like I can replace a drink with so many other things, you know, what mm-hmm. especially people shopping. Yeah. Those are my two favorites. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you know, to you know, drinking was really a symptom of codependency and like just my childhood stuff mm-hmm. coming coming to the surface. Yeah. So. I also don't think authenticity is net good necessarily. Like mm-hmm. just because you're not triggered doesn't mean you're pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought it was an interesting definition because it takes away the need for it to be anything other than just like what would you be in this situation if you were like relaxed or if you mm. and sometimes you know maybe that's not the prettiest thing for everybody but like how would you act in this situation if you felt like at ease with yourself or the situation and that was a definition that I was like I could get down with that as yeah. this is my authentic response it might not be the best one but I mean, I was, that, that just makes me think like, man, my authentic responses are so fucked up and right. I like often have to like pull myself back, you know, just like that's how my brain naturally works. It like goes to the most extreme thing of like, well, I've totally fucked it up and everyone hates me and I will get canceled. And then I'm like, nope, nope, that's, that's okay. We've gone to therapy for quite a while. We've done the work on this. We can walk this back and then I can like have a reasonable answer, but yeah, authentically, I'm fucked up. Well, there you go. That's it. Why does authentic <laughs> have to have a positive, you know, or this like toxic yeah. positive cloud around it? That's, I think, yeah. what's been so misconstrued in our understanding of authenticity is innately good. I mean, I think making me think like, yeah, like is sobriety inherently good? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, just because I quit drinking didn't mean, yeah, I became more myself and was suddenly healed. If anything, right. as I've talked a lot about, I didn't do my taxes for seven years and was in codependent relationship after codependent relationship. You know, it's like I feel more sober now being like solvent with the IRS and living by myself and like taking care of myself in these ways that like, again, like I do think my sobriety is the only reason I am able to do those things but it's like you know I hear people say it's like I don't have I don't have to have a drink in my hand to be an asshole it's like (laughs) you know I do identify as an alcoholic that doesn't mean I have to be actively drinking to act like one so yeah Mm -hmm. I like I like thinking about yeah just because you do one thing doesn't just automatically mean another thing oh and you so think it well, you're like, this yes. will, or we, we often, I'll speak from the eye. I do. I'm like, if I fix this one thing, I will be so good at opening my mail. I will say fixing some of my money stuff did actually give me some of the things I had always dreamt of. But yeah, I would say most things in my life and certain skincare products I've invested in did give me the skin I always wanted. But, you know, <laughs> should, should I drop the skincare routine? Um, yeah, I'm like, wait a second. We need to have you on Good For You. Yeah, 100% <laughs> we need to have you on Good For You. I honestly would, I'm like, don't mean to be that bitch, but like people have been asking for it lately. And I'm so like, yes. I will never, like, I'm like, I will never, if I, the second I start talking about skincare, this is where we have so much to talk about as the author of How to Not Always Be Working and the hosts of Talk much about don't fucking monetize all your hobbies Wallace and Michelle Mm -hmm. I'm so like don't get me talking about skincare because I swear God will give me like a terrible joke and like like L'Oreal or something will be like do you want to like have a skincare line and I'll be like no (laughs) I'm not strong enough to say no (laughs) I'm not strong enough to say no to that and so that is where yes I will be a guest I will like I'll I'll have to release it through another channel because I cannot on Marley Grace on Marley Grace's zone. I don't think I I don't know how I would suddenly just be like so the skincare routine. People will be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" It's a pivot. It's a pivot. It would be a hell of a pivot. Maybe a hell of a pivot, but well, I think what's interesting about it is, what do you feel that that kind of contributed to in your life? Like not to be like skincare made me happy. No. We know it doesn't, but... <laughs> or did it? I don't know. My eyeshadow today is making me happy, yeah. so I don't know. It may, it's 
Yeah. We have you too, to be honest. Uh huh. <laughs> what we talk about so much on this podcast too, and because we're talking about being seen in all the ways that that shows up, is that, you know, in clothes, cognition, how we dress, how we show up, how we feel in our bodies all contributes to then how we show up for other people, how we show up for our work. And it is all related, but it's really hard to sometimes not feel comfortable talking about that interrelation without feeling like, fuck, I'm contributing to these horrible beauty standards or capitalism and wrestling with that all the time and as somebody who's like hey you know what honestly I do like this face cream or skincare or whatever how do you wrestle with that as it relates to your practice of being a creative person in this world you know it started when about like a year and a half ago I was with my my best friend Katie who you know is a very she's a musician she's a very public person right she's in front of thousands of people singing her songs and that woman has the nicest skin I've ever seen in my life. And she watched me wash my face one night, you guys. And I like put some water on it, used the hotel soap, and then like put toner on, and that was it. And she lo- she goes, "What are what are you doing?" I was like, "What?" And she was like, "Did you just did you just wash your face like with a bar of yeah, soap with and hand then put soap? only toner on?" Yeah, and I was like, "Yes." And she was like. We're going to Whole Foods immediately, <laughs> and I we're getting a starter pack. And so it, I started with all like, what's that brand? A, a cure, A C U R E. Love a cure. They're great. Yeah. So we just we she gave me a morning. We got about five products for the morning and five for the night. I got my creams, my serums, my toners. And, you know, I kept up with it for a minute, but then my, like, relationship was falling apart and my life was kind of falling apart and it just it didn't quite stick. And then I sort of made some upgrades. I love the, um, you guys do, like, the dupes, like, what, mm-hmm. like, breaking down, like, like, I feel like CeraVe is, like, a chef's kiss, like, dupe. It's, like, oh, yeah. we don't need... Like we go to write, like that is the morning face wash. Like don't ever take that away from me. I'm clearly starting to drop the routine. <laughs> one product. You heard it here first. Yeah, really. Um, but then it's like, so yeah, I, and I've made a little sweat. Okay, this might sound crazy, but I like just discovered Sephora. <laughs> Oh my God, Marley. Welcome like to the I rest went, of your life. I went, Dude, it's the best. I went into a Sephora for the first time in my life like a month ago. And I'm looking at, with Katie, I'm looking at her. I'm like, hun, they have all our brands here. And she's like, this is where I found them. I was like, oh. I was like, you're saying these stores are everywhere? And she's like, oh, okay. So I'm really, you know, some of my brands are, I love Tatcha. I love Drunk Elephant, yep. and my end of the day is Skin Food and Everyday Oil. So oh, that's yeah. out. Those are my, I'll drop those. But here's the thing. I never miss a day or night now, and it's been that way since I started, since a post-breakup, moved back to Michigan, moved in alone, In it was dead of winter, and I just, I honestly, like, I look forward to it every day. Mm-hmm. I've gotten really into like cupping my mm-hmm. chest and face cool. all ago um, with like the little suction Ooh. draggers. Love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just, I don't know what happened to me, but it's like, I mean, it's really just grounding and like it really bookends my day. To me, it's like an esteemable act. I'm like, it's like people are really into like making their bed or like doing their kind of like maintenance task. And it's, that and my skin just started looking fucking amazing (laughs) that I was just like, wow, this, I just feel pretty. I feel pretty. I feel good. And it's like, I will say what I am running up against right now in terms of that sort of like, how do I marry the sort of like beauty standards is I am, you know, going towards those mid thirties. I am noticing a few wrinkles on the face where I am asking myself those questions of like, do I want to get one thing of Botox in between my eyes? Do I want to get something like that? And it's like, I don't want to be a person whose forehead doesn't move. That sounds horrible. And I am sort of like, I know like the cupping right now feels good, but I, I will say getting into this stuff has definitely just like working out. 
I love working out. I have a personal trainer. It's really important to me. And sometimes I just like anything, I will notice where I'm like, I'm thinking a little too much about how this part of me looks or this thing. And so, yeah, I'm I'm like sound off in the comments for those who are listening. I'm like, I, I am still sort of finding that middle ground. I think that's part of why I avoided working out or doing skincare stuff, because I was like, I don't want to notice things I don't like. Anyways, that's my story. It makes me feel happy, good, and pretty. Yeah. I think, first off, welcome to the club, Bestie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sephora, you got to become a card-carrying member because you get points. And then you I get, will. You I get will. Stuff get for free. I have some products to send you. We have to turn tune you on to Biafine, oh, yes. which is our Holy Grail product. Truly. It's from Europe. It's amazing. You will become obsessed with it. What's, what is that? It's like a 10 euro <sighs> yeah. everything cream. It's the best of all time. Goat. Truly. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yep. Okay. I actually have like four bottles. So I'm just going to send you one yes. because I, we, we like imported them ourselves from Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I can't wait. But I what you, I, so I, I mean, I was a dancer and had um, eating disorders and all the things, right. And then was like an extreme athlete running ultra marathons, which is like another form of, you know, disorder. And something that I struggle with a lot is body neutrality and body positivity, because I feel like the body neutrality movement, I'm like, I get it, but I also don't know if I like get it, get it, or like believe it personally because of enclosed cognition, because like the way that I look, I know it impacts how I think and how I feel. And I, I don't know if I like totally buy body positivity too, because I don't want to be like toxic positivity towards myself. Like there's not quite a perfect fit for me personally, that I'm kind of like, ooh, I just have to be aware. It sounds like you're really similar with the way that yeah. you think about exercise. Yeah. But that's something I was also thinking about when we were talking at the beginning of this conversation around modification and how people say, like, we'll just be happy with it. I mean, don't even don't yeah. even put anything on your appearance or how you are perceived by other people. Like, that's almost none of your business. And if you are, I don't know, like, if you're overcome by it or if you can't stop thinking about it, like, there's something wrong with you. And I, I just don't know if I, how I feel about that. Well, and I love, this is so fun to talk about because it in real time is helping me because I'm like, I, at least right now, my skincare routine and my working out, I really do it for myself. Mm -hmm. Like I really don't have the relationship where I'm like, I hope the hot girl working at the coffee shop thinks my skin looks okay. <laughs> right. Like I'm really like my skin looks okay. And that makes me feel mm -hmm, great. Mm -hmm. And I think that that for me, like when I think about this little wrinkle, that is a little bit of a line for me where mm -hmm. I'm like, I kind of don't want people to see the wrinkle. Mm -hmm. And where, whereas I'm like, I think I actually don't care about right. it right now. Maybe that'll shift. But I think that's a good, like measuring point for me is yeah like when i'm working out i'm like yes i feel strong i look hot to mm -hmm. myself and as soon as i start to attach that to like does that person think i'm hot i'm in a that's not a that's a sign that something needs to get turned back towards myself mm -hmm. i do hope everyone thinks i'm hot and is absolutely <laughs> obsessed with me but i mean it's none of my business but i do hope everyone is obsessed with me <laughs> We are taking a quick pause to talk about Open, one of our sponsors. Open is a mindfulness app built to transform your life. And boy, oh boy, can I just say Open has made the last eight months of my life a lot easier <laughs> because I've been pregnant and uh, <laughs> definitely not going to yoga class, definitely not going to Pilates, definitely not going to any meditation classes just because I have, I've been really sick for most of my pregnancy and then very swollen. Shrek feet, SpongeBob feet. It's just not a cute look. And being able to exercise from home at my own pace and my own timing on the open app has been a godsend. And when I don't want to exercise, when I'm having a spiral panic attack about the fact that I'm bringing a human onto this planet in 2020, I can just turn on a meditation and bring myself back to center. It is chef's kiss amazing. I use open to fall asleep. I use open to do many breathwork sessions. And I also love their Pilates. They have the best music curation. They have really amazing guides. We can't say enough positive things about them. And you get to try them free for 30 days, which is an amazing deal because it's such a premium subscription. And it's just a beautiful experience. 
through and through. So we will link your 30 days free in the show notes, or you can use code holisticism at open.com backslash holisticism. So don't miss out. Honestly, it couldn't hurt you to try even just one little meditation session. It's about to be a little crazy time of year. You might benefit when you're <laughs> a, like, I'm sick of my little. family. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <Just a bit. laughs> I mean, one month of open alone is less than the cost of a yoga class, a Pilates class or a meditation class. So it's definitely worth it. Or even like two matches. <laughs> if you go to a coffee shop, they're like eight fifty now. <laughs> yeah, you can either get a, a matcha with CBD oil in it once, yeah. or you can you can open every single day of the month. Every day, honestly, go sign up with Open. dot com backslash holisticism. I think to pretend that. Or to think that the esteemable thing in some conversations is to not care feels to me disingenuous because to our point earlier, it's like body modification, fashion, you know, expressing ourselves creatively through the way that we show up physically in the world is just part of us being a social creature. And I always think about like the little birds that you see on the Discovery Channel or like planet Earth who have the crazy dance and like the crazy feather where they make the crazy nest where they collect all these very specific twigs. And it's like, you know, there is something about presentation that as social beings, we can't help but engage in and to not wrestle with it and talk about how complicated it is and just to negate it and say that's wrong, that's bad, that's not spiritual to me feels disingenuine. But on the note of that thought of, well, maybe that's the line. Is there anything recently, whether it has to do with appearance or not, it doesn't have to, but we are talking about this. (laughs) Was there anything recently where you were like, I thought I was being so healthy. I was on my shit. But you look back and you're like, a little toxic. That was maybe not the healthiest. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. (laughs) I mean, You know, I really, I'm really in some stuff right now where I, some stuff around my cycle, my menstrual Mm -hmm. cycle, which I religiously have tracked for almost seven years. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have like a couple, I have like a sort of like a pattern of chronic health issues that kind of are seemingly connected that have to do with like, I mean, it's sort of just like a nice little autoimmune co- mystery cocktail, mm-hmm. as we all seem to like to have right now or are ha- not like to have. But um, so, yeah, I'm dealing with some stuff with like I have chronic nerve pain in my spine, some like eczema stuff and some like blood stuff happening. And I'll say that like lately I- I've been tra- like kind of doing that thing where I'm like, OK, maybe I'll like cut out some sugar and, and like make sure I'm getting outside more, staying really hydrated, like kind of doing my stuff. And it's just like, nothing's touching it. Mm -hmm. And then I can't help, but, and so it's funny that when we opened, you were like, um, the, how many friends do you have question? Mm -hmm. Because I'm experiencing a lot of like, I'm on my phone a lot communicating with people and just noticing some of the like, energetics of my health stuff and um yeah I mentioned like getting out of you know I was in a two and a half year relationship and was living out west and that ended in January me and June um, my dog moved back to Michigan where I'm from and that relation I mean I had like a very severe mental crisis mental health crisis right during kind of during that time which also at like almost 11 years sober was really humbling to be like whoa and yeah so I think a lot in the last year I've really been humbled at the like those moments where I'm like I really thought I was taking care of myself and I'm not and I think I really like I was just talking to sort of like a mentor friend about this that like I kind of resent not being just like a normal person sometimes like I kind of want to like some of my stuff that's been coming up lately you know I feel safe to share this here on this podcast 
I was like saying to a friend earlier, I was like, I'll never say this out loud. So I love that now one hour later, I'm like, <laughs> one of the health things I'm dealing with, I think is like an EMF wave situation where when like the dryer or heater is on or microwave or stove or humidifier, I start to feel weird. Mm-hmm. And I, so I'm, <laughs> that's real. So I'm afraid that I'm be like Tin Hat guy where I'm going to be like EMS waves are killing us you know and I'm I think I'm I'm like I texted a friend I was like well there's no carbon monoxide I don't have anemia Mm -hmm. and there's not a gas leak so I'm officially a new ager who's 34 and maybe in perimenopause and has EMF wave syndrome (laughs) um so uh, anyways I share that here today to say yeah I don't know what's wrong with me and I just have to take care of myself probably more than I think I am, which just pisses me off because I want to be a person who can just like eat McDonald's and use the microwave (laughs) like other God given Americans. And it turns out that gives me IBS and a migraine. Well, you're speaking to two highly sensitive people. Who, well, is there a book for me? Or? Oh, there is a book. There's definitely yeah. a book on that. So you guys don't think I'm crazy that when I turn appliances. No, I thought I was trying no. to think of what, you know, as soon as someone says, like, I'm going to share something, I was trying to think of, like, oh, I wonder, like, what she, <laughs> I thought you were going to talk to us about your poop. Uh, I, I, I was like, all right, cool. I'm yeah, like, I love yeah, I my poop, you know, but. <laughs> and that, yeah, I don't find that weird at all. I'm like, yeah, fucking yeah. Wi-Fi is insane first of all when you think about it so that is yeah, not crazy same with like bluetooth yeah. i'm kind of freaking myself out lately because i've always used these yeah i've always used these and i started using bluetooth headphones because i have to like listen to these hypnosis <laughs> i'm insane um i have to listen to like birthing hypnosis at night and so i can't use the corded things as one has to right so i'm wearing like my little bluetooth things but um my husband yes. has brain cancer and he's he does not use any Bluetooth and I like, I'm like, I don't know if I like it. I do feel like it's like impacting me, but we also don't use the microwave in our house. We have hung a painting over our microwave and now we yeah, call right. it Mart microwave art. And, but the only person who uses it is Maceo. When he comes to our house, he <laughs> reinstalls the microwave every time he comes over and moves the painting. So we don't, we don't use the microwave. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. So I don't, I don't think it's crazy. Not at all. I don't know if it's EMFs, but I, but I also, I don't know. I feel like all of our technology, like I used to get really bad migraines when I'd be on my, my computer for way too long. Oh, yeah. And also just thinking about how, to your point about being on your phone a lot, like I get really sad when I'm on my computer or phone for too many hours. And when I think back to, okay, what's, what's been happening over the past 48 hours? Like, where is this coming from? Sometimes I can be like, oh, you know, this thing, this thing. And then I go outside, I see some people and I'm like, oh, I just was on my screen for way too long. And I, I genuinely felt very sad. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing a lot of TV mm-hmm. lately, which is really. The uh-huh. eyes. It's a lot on the eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I got into Love Island, and <laughs> as you may know, that television program has about 60 episodes a season. Oh, yeah. And so you can really watch a lot in a row. Oh, yeah. We were just talking to Lauren Haynes about that. <laughs> yep, from Wooden Spoon Herb. She's obsessed with Love Island. She is. That's so beautiful because Lauren is also friends with Katie who gave me the skincare routine. And Katie is also who told me to watch Love Island. So we love wooden spinners in our family. That's beautiful. I'm like literally holding crystals. I'm like, I'm like, we love everybody in our I'm just protecting myself from the EMF. Just, I love this conversation. Yeah, I'm like, no. no I mean, EMF waves, authentically confusing and scary. Authentically confusing and scary. I have to start really accepting that I'm a highly sensitive person and it does just takes me more, just takes me more steps to take care of myself and other people. And that's okay. 1000%. Beautiful because that has led you here. We talk about this a lot of that's led you to create the life for yourself where you're doing creative work, you're teaching, you're hosting people. Because you were like, you know what, this other routine, that's not going to work for me. And that in itself is just a creative act. Just being like, I'm going to create my life around, you know, what works for me and 
accepting those sensitivities as like powers is how we like to think about it when we talk about squiggly brained, intuitive, creative people. That's true. Yes. I love that. I love the squiggly brain. <laughs> that was a brilliant messaging yes. that you downloaded, Michelle, at some point. Squiggly brain. Honestly, it just came gorgeous. out in a podcast and someone was like, oh, I, I'm going to call myself a squiggly brain. And I was like, sorry, what? You're like, you said it. It's like, like, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you, but okay. I love when someone's like, you said that, and you're like, yes, I did. I'm like, did I? Because I think I just sound stupid all the time. But thank you. I'm so glad that it resonated with you. Uh, how can we take every single class you've ever taught? Yeah, I'm like, can you update us on what's happening in <laughs> your universe? Because there's so many things. Like the quilting workshop is coming online again that oh, I'm yeah. like, I want to do it. Yeah, quilt class, the... Sunday quilt class starts the 6th. Tuesday quilt class starts the 8th. Of November. Yeah, I've been teaching a quilt of something you human online since September of 2020, and it's the funnest class on the internet, I say. Um, it's the only class that I cap, so um, only 40 people take it, um, which is nice, and people get a lot of more sort of sacred container intimacy time, and we and you learn how to make a quilt from and no rulers, no rules. And then, um, you know, I've taught a lot in the last year and there's record, you can buy recordings of any of my classes. I have classes on how to make your own online class. I have classes on how to write a book. I have classes on how to research for your projects. I have cute little classes about unblocking creativity. I have a dance class. Uh, and I have my best selling class is literally just called newsletter class and it's a class <laughs> about making your own new place. And yeah, I have a sub stack that I've been writing for the last year called Monday Monday and people can read it for free every Monday. And that's, those are my things that I do regularly. There you go. Then Marley Grace dot space is my internet website. And you have an excellent Instagram presence. Oh my God, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you know I've had such an as we all have such a complicated relationship with Instagram but um again I really was helped by the digital altars class and have I have really just learned to have fun there and really give so little fucks about what anybody thinks about it cares about it I just really could care less at this point, which <laughs> took a long time. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad you like it. I, I like to make fun little captions. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a real maker myself, uh, but I love to make my little posts and, and say my little things. <laughs> I love that. Well, because, okay, because this is about being seen in general and we've gone through so many aspects of that, what would you say to maybe your past self or a version of your past self that was struggling with being seen online or relationship with social media, it could be Instagram, whatever, but like showing up there and having fun. What would you say to your past self who's maybe not there yet struggling with it? Um, I think I would say that like surveilling Instagram and looking for clues that you're going to get canceled or upset someone or doesn't help you. Uh, if you're, if somebody's going to come for you, they're going to come for you probably while you're sleeping. So um, <laughs> there's really like, it's like just literally, literally you're on a different time zone. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you know, I think I would just say the, like that stuff might happen, but when it does, you'll have the tools to figure it out. It's like, I think it's just really like the amount of time I have spent rehearsing what would happen if X, Y, and Z happened, whether it's on social media or in a relationship is so much time gone. And I think that's where I'm like, all of my worst fears never happened, have never happened on social media, knock on wood. And a lot of my worst fears in my life have happened and I'm still sitting here fine. So it's like, I have, I have the tools. Like if, if I really not just, and I don't mean, you know, can't we throw cancel around, but even like if I really did do something in a space that I felt like I wanted to have some accountability around, it's like, again, like I have the tools and the friends and the resources to do whatever I need to do. And so, yeah, I think the like, like, 
thinking if the more I'm on it, the more I can protect myself from anything bad happening is just not real. So I would say that. Truth. The, the, my worst fears on social media have not happened, but in my life they have. I really feel similar that way where I'm like, hmm, I seem (laughs) to still be here. I'm good. Exactly. Well, we're glad you're still here. Yeah. We really like you. Glad I'm still here too. I I feel (laughs) this, that this was such a long time coming and that it happened at the perfect moment. I agree as well. Like we were like, Marley is going to come on. We just, it'll, it'll happen. I know. It's perfect timing. Again, I'm a reader. I'm a listener. I'm a student. I'm just, I'm such a fan of the Holisticism mission, the podcasts, the Mighty Networks, the Kajabi, the Notion. I'm just, I will just, you know, let me just fan guy one time quick because I was, I was driving the other day (laughs) and I was in my head. I was like, I wonder if someone asked me why I love holisticism, what would I say? <laughs> and the thing I said is I was like, you know, before holisticism, I had to piece together a bunch of shit. I had to watch like Marie Forleo's fucking free TV show and some other lady's marketing podcast for straights <laughs> and some other fucking, who kn- you know what I mean? I had to get so, I was just like, oh, this is killing me. And then, you know, it's so funny. Somebody sent me a free holisticism class or like video that you did, Michelle, in the pandemic, who was like, you'll like this girl. She's a dancer who does stuff similar to you. And I was like, wow. And I just really loved that. I was like, oh, I'm like not taking dance class, but I know I'm taking class from a dancer. And I love that. Anyway, so for me, holisticism is just my one-stop shop for everything I need to run a business and be an artist and be a six-figure earner and live my dreams. So I just want to thank you both. You're amazing. <laughs> and it feels great to actually get to finally say that out loud. Wow. Thank you. wow. thank you so much. <laughs> Truly, my pregnancy hormones so cannot funny. handle this because I am about to burst into tears. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it <laughs> short. Seriously, I'm, I'm crying. Um, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> I really, yeah. thank uh, you. what a wonderful testimonial. We are That's so beautiful. grateful. That's good. You can use that. You can use that wherever you want to use that. Transcribe it. Put it on a billboard. I don't care. Marley, I it. remember when I figured out like who you were, I had this moment of, have you ever been to Skylight Books in LA? Absolutely. Iconic, wonderful store. I saw your book in there. It was on, at one point it was on, I think like the top Skylight books that people were buying. And I remember seeing it and later purchasing it and then making the connection. I was like, wait, that's that Marley. (laughs) And I was just like, oh my God. I love that. It's so funny because that book or how to not always be working. Talk about like the finagles of publishing that book. As far as I know, I don't see one around me, but um, doesn't have my website. It doesn't say my Instagram handle. It says nothing. And I don't think it says anywhere of where to find me. So that book, more than any, I find that people (laughs) will, like, own it for a while and maybe even start to be my friend and even maybe follow me on social media. And then they're suddenly like, did you write that book? And I'm like, God damn it. Like. But yeah, how to not always be working. Um, it's about in, in next week is the four year anniversary of oh. that book coming out, which is beautiful. And I'm, I just found out it has sold over 41,000 copies. Oh, and Marley. I know. And this is again, it's like nobody tells me stuff. <laughs> it's like, that's what this is my book writing class. I was like, being published by a publisher is cool and absolutely helpful. And trash. <laughs> Let me say that. It's really hard. Yeah. Like, I, I, I emailed my, like, editor recently, and I then emailed my agent, and she was like, oh, sweetie, she hasn't worked there for a while. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> no one no <laughs> talks to me. Um, and the, apparently the book's done well and continues to. And that yeah. took off. I think it had a second life. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the pandemic. pandemic yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's a great little book. You know, I did learn from Marie Forleo once um, that, you know, when you put a book out, you have to think of it as part of the ecosystem of your business. You can't 
think of it as existing by itself. No. And I loved that. I love to think of like, oh yeah, my books, people who read my books take my classes. People who take my classes, take my books. People mm-hmm. who my books come to friendship meadows you know it's like it's all was getting to center when you what was the difference of publishing that book and the experience of that yeah getting to center was with the same publisher a different editor and it was not I feel like I did it certainly hasn't done the same as how to not always be working I mean how to not always be working is like a flashy easy gift book Oh, it's small. It's pink. It's like at Barnes and Noble checkout. Like it really like can fit. It fits me. It fits mainstream. I mean, it was like Target made a huge yeah. order. You know, it's like it wow. fits mainstream more. Getting to center is a little. It's a little more like esoteric, weird essay. And like I feel like getting to center stays a little more in like the Marley Grace fan base where I think how to not always be working really, really is outside. It's like the deep cut versus the single. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Li- yes. Literally. And so the next book that I'm working on right now, I think we'll try to go with a different publisher. And then it's, it's looking a little closer to a how to not always be working. I, I love my newsletter really is the place where I feel like, I'm creative and I write about my process and my practice. And I think I have not to like shame getting to center. I think it's a great book that helped a lot of people. I think book format for me is like the kind of like sassy self-help cut and dry how to blank is like just makes more sense for me. And so I think that's kind of the next is the next book direction. But yeah, so getting to center has been fine. And I think was like both too specific in some ways and too vague in other ways. So yeah, it's, you know, it was a little bit of the like sophomore slump feeling. Um, It also came out a week before an election in a pandemic. So uh, most other friends who also had books come out then have a similar experience. So yeah, that was my, my experience with that. I like the deep cut fan over here. <laughs> but yes, to your point, it was it was a little bit more amorphous in certain ways, which I like. Exactly. Amorphous. That's a great way to put that. I like the way that y'all just described that of because you're just like this prolific creator, which is what I aspire to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just like thinking of the packaging that you put your messages in and like consistency and almost sometimes I'm like, book, why would I write a book? I write a book every month, like with all the content I make. Why would I Yes. But that I can edit whenever I want. And like, it's so much less precious to me. And it's, I don't know, why would I, why would I like put it in a hardbound thing? But there's also so much value. I mean, clearly there's so much value to the 41,000 people who have read your book. I'm so curious, Michelle, if you were to write a book, what would you write it about? I don't even know, dude. There's like so much stuff that I'm you interested in. I have like 15 different book ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you're who we need the book. That's like, how, like, ugh, maybe this is too boring, but I'm like, I would, I would read the, like, basically that huge testimonial I just gave. I would read like the book version of that. Like the book, like PCCL, Notion for Baddies, Digital Alters, kind of like the, like, how to run a, like, thoughtful, holistic business book. Can we get that? I mean, yeah, sure. But then I'm like, okay, that has to be like encyclopedic. <laughs> I would have to make like, you know, five different tomes and it changes all the time. And like, you know, then I just like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a box set. It's a box. Set. It's like a, it's, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I mean, there was something I was like kind of working on a different book idea for a while. And that's when I was like, this is going to have to be a box set. It's going to take me 10 years. I can't do it. So then, You're like, and, and it's a coffee table so, book also. So. Coffee table book box set. And then I'm like, let's just talk about it on the podcast. Because like an hour of me talking on the podcast is like, I know that's a pretty decent book. It's a pretty decent book. I'm having that right now where the book I'm writing probably won't come out till spring 2024. But it's kind of part of what I'm thinking and talking about more now. So yeah, that part of the process is really hard. I'm still going to take your book writing class. I'm going to take it while I'm on maternity leave, which is like, it's a bit too much. But I'm going to do it <laughs> like, like as if I'll like have time to write a book while I'm also like <laughs> keeping a human alive. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so is your maternity leave. Are you going to like literally not do any work? 
I'm going to try and fuck off. Yeah. For a while. Like three months or like a month or like six months or like a year. Definitely six weeks. For sure, for sure. That's and then I, <laughs> I love this. My yeah. eyes just so went I'm like, like, I'm like, I'm like, shame. I'm like, give me three. This is so, and this is authenticity, people. This is authenticity. This is what we like. Yeah, I'm gonna at least six weeks. So six weeks of like fuck off, figure out how to feed it. <laughs> yeah. And apparently at six weeks is when they really start crying. Like the first, they're like in their little stealth mode before where they're like, keep me. I'm so cute. Like, look how cute I am. I'm just like cooing and stuff. And then at six weeks is when they start like, just they like banshee yell. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to get to that point and then I'm going to do a check in and be like, how am I feeling? How's it going? How's the team? Like we just hired this amazing person who's our project manager who just joined the team. So that feels really good for everyone. Feels supportive. But like, I don't know. I like also love my work and I love, like, I understand who I am through work, not like work or making money, but like just thinking like this conversation I'm feeling around. Right. So maybe I'll miss that and like really want that part of me to like, you know, ooze back in. So IDK, definitely six weeks and no pressure to jump back in fast. I'm going to try and ease in, but we'll see what happens. That sounds great. That make that's like my brain would probably work about. I mean, that was really like my surgery. Yeah, I mean, very okay. different. And but like a thing where I was like in in like the surgery lineup, I think some people were like, take a month. And I was like, a week? Sounds good. Right. And then same thing. I was like, I think I want to be like writing my newsletter every Monday is my job. Like I do get paid for that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I have to do that to know what's going on, yes, people. Yes, really. Like I just, I can't, can't not do it. So I love six weeks. For you. <laughs> Thank you. And if it has to be five, if it has to be five and a half, maybe, you know, we'll get there. But okay. I, I love six weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's the plan. That's Keep you posted. Keep you updated. I'm sure <laughs> everyone will know yeah. all about it. Please do. <laughs> Oh, Marley, this was truly a delight. This is so fun, you guys. I'm like, I really do. We should all hang out sometime in real life. Let's do it. Would love to. We we should all hang out with with the new bed also. Only if he's cool. If he's not cool, then like we <laughs> won't bring him around. I'll let you go. You are a gem, a delight, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marley. Thanks, Marley. Bye. 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 The Twelve Pies is produced by yours truly, Wallace Moore Blanchard. Our theme music is made by Nathan McKay, and our wonderful editing is done by Softer Sound Studios, who you can find more information about in our show notes.